All right, we were at the last question of the section, and the most important thing to know about the last question is it's probably gonna be the hardest question. At least the last five or so are gonna be up there. So it's okay if at this point you're starting to skip or guess randomly, just make sure you get everything else right that's earlier, and you still have a really good shot at a good score. So it's okay to skip things. Just don't leave them blank, but it's okay to skip. This is hard, and I doubt many eighth or ninth graders know how to do this. So. Um, don't feel bad if that's one of you, okay? If that's you. So here's what I would do here. I've got the, the value of a collectible comic book increased by 167% from the end of 2011 to the end of 2012, and then decreased by 16% from the end of 2012 to the end of 2013. What was the net percentage increase in the value of the collectible comic book from the end of 2011 to the end of 2013? Seems like a lot of information, right? Too much, almost. Here's the thing, though. I know this is not enough information. They left out one very important thing. How much did this comic book cost to start, right? If I knew that, then all this other stuff that they gave me might be more easy to do because I have an actual number that I can change its price. I can change the value by following the instructions. This is a very common SAT move. They make us think about the real world, but using algebra. And if this were the real world, you're not, you're not thinking about prices that way. They don't, they're not like X plus seven is not a price of something. So what we want to do is, if possible, bring it back to the real world and let's give this thing a price. This is a strategy I call arithmetize. Basically what it's going to do, it's like a magic Harry Potter spell. You take a situation where you would need algebra variables and you wave your magic wand, arithmetize, and suddenly it's back to arithmetic. It's just real numbers again. And, and it just lets us think about things in much more natural ways, easier ways, and hopefully ways that let us understand the rest of the story, because this is definitely a confusing story anyway. So what I'm gonna do is, because we're dealing with percentages, I know that a nice number with percentages is 100. So I'm gonna pretend that the original value of this comic book is $100, okay? I am making that up. There is nothing in the question that says that. If I wanted to, I could make it worth $200. I could make it worth $50. I could make it worth $72.19. But I'm not picking any of those other numbers because they're a little harder to work with. And I'm still gonna use the calculator, but let's think about as few things as possible. So with arithmetize, numbers that are easy are often useful. Numbers like zero and one come in handy a lot as well. But here, I don't really want the price of the comic book to be $0, and even $1 feels too low. So 100 feels nice, and that way with the percentages, we at least have a little bit of kind of like a frame of reference. So you'll see why 100 is so great when we get to the end. So let's start by just following the instructions. The, the first thing here, the, the, the price is increased by 167%. So this is, this is also a little bit of a trap. The way that I would deal with this, I use something called the open formula, okay? There's two versions of it. There's one version that just looks straight up like the, the word open, that's why I call it that. So the O stands for the original, the P stands for the percentage, the E is the equal sign, and N stands for the new value. So it's a way of understanding the percent of something. But I don't want the percent of something, I want a percent change. And so we have to use a slightly different formula. It's gonna look like this, but instead of the regular old P, we're gonna represent the change using a one plus or minus, okay? And basically the, the benefit of this formula is it's gonna match exactly with the, the formula and the story. So uh, the original price we made up, that's our X, that's our 100. So I'm gonna plug that in. So that's what the O stands for. The O is the original price. The N is the new price. So we don't know the new price, so that's gonna be a mystery. We'll leave that as N. But because they said it increased by 167%, we are able to, first of all, recognize that it's not a minus, it's a plus. We'll use the minus later when we get to the decrease. But for now, increase means increase, so it's increasing. The only other annoying thing about this formula is that when we talk about percentages, we just talk about like 167 as the percentage. But when we use percentages in math, we have to convert. We don't really think of them that way. We think of them as decimals. And so 167% is 1.67 as a decimal. And we have to use it that way in the formula. It's a very good habit to get into is that you move that decimal place two spots to go from a percentage to the decimal equivalent. It's just a good way of thinking about percentages for math. Sometimes uh, teachers will build the division by 100 into the formula. I, I just would rather you do that separately so that it, it's less stuff in the formula. So that means that the P, which stands for the percentage, is gonna be a decimal version of that percentage. But now we just have some arithmetic to do. So I'm gonna ignore the rest of the story for a sec. 
we have 100 times 2.67, and that's what the trap is, is most people are going to kind of ignore the fact that we got to increase it. So it's not just 167%, it's more like 267%. If that confuses you, well, just trust me. So when we multiply, I don't know why I'm even using the calculator, because 100 times 2.67 is 267. So that's the new price of this calculator, uh, calculator, comic book, <laughs> at the end of 2012. Awesome. So this is 2011 uh, to 2012. But more stuff happens. Let's dive back in. The, the price is then decreased by 16%. So we're going to use that formula again, but some of the things have changed. Okay, the original is no longer 100 because we started over. The beginning of the year started with a new original price. Now it's the price we just had. It's the $267 that this comic book now costs. Then the one is now going to be followed by a minus sign because it's a decrease now. So again, this is the benefit of this formula is if it says decrease in the, in the question, it's going to be a minus in the formula. If it says increase in the question, it's going to be a plus in the formula. It's very literal, okay? And then 16% is as a decimal 0.16, right? Remember, we're moving that decimal place two spots to turn it into a decimal. And this is going to give us the, the newest value. So again, we just have some um, some work to do with our numbers. So 0.1, or sorry, 1 minus 0.16, oh, 1 minus 0.16 is 0.84. So this is the kind of stuff that I wouldn't try to do in my head. It's way too complicated. So using my calculator, 267 times 0.84 is 224.28. Okay. That's the new cost of this comic book, right? So we made it up that this comic book cost $100 to start. But now, at the end of 2013, it has this new price, $224.28. So, we're just being asked, finally, what is the net percent increase in this comic book? If we had picked a different number, the percent increase would be the same. But because we picked 100, we can kind of just look at the final price and know the answer. Especially because there isn't really a trap answer here. The answer is A, okay, 124.28. We kind of see where that's coming from, right? We at least see some of the same numbers, right? 24.28, right? That's part of it. And then 24.28. Now, you might be thinking, well, how did 124.28 become 224.28? Well, think about it, right? How much did it increase by? It started at 100. So it's kind of like we have to remove that first 100 from are thinking about it and be like, okay, besides the hundred that it originally cost, it increased its price by another $128, uh, sorry, $224 and 28 cents. So that's the thing they're asking about is not ignoring the original price. What's that, the, the change that happened? How much was that? And because our original price was a hundred, we don't need to do any conversions. The increase in the price in dollars is the same as the increase in the price in percent. Because what do we choose as our original value? $100. What's the most convenient percentage? 100%, right? So we, I picked that number because I knew it would make my last step easier. If we had picked a different number, we could just use this open formula to basically kind of bring all of this together. So let me show you that. Uh, it's, it's confusing, but let me just, you know, why not? It's the hardest question. Might as well give you as much information as possible. So again, we would use the open formula. But this time, I'm curious what happened from start to finish, right? So what happened from 2011 to 2013? Well, now we know the original, original price of the comic book was 100. We know that it increased in price, right? We see it because we, we have a final price. But also they, they told us, right? What is the net percent increase? So that's, that's part of just the question. But I don't know the P, right? The way they're asking, I don't know that number, right? What is the net percent increase? This is a fancy way of saying solve for P. So even though before we had the P values because we were doing each year individually, the way the, that percentages work is they don't, they don't all add up, right? So actually that's a good example of let's, let's do something here. 167 minus 16, this is the trap. 
because this is 167, right, our increase originally, and then it decreased by 16%. That's 151. Now, that, that's not how percentages work, first of all. Second of all, that's not how hard questions on the SAT work. So if you get to the last question in a section and you get an answer in like two seconds, odds are good you're wrong. You're probably falling for the exact trap that the SAT wants to set. So at the very least, you'd want to cross out that answer and then guess from whatever's left. That, that's way too easy for a question that's supposed to be the hardest one in the section. But moving back to our, our formula here, we don't know the P. They're asking us to solve for that. But we do know the new. Right? We know that at the end of 2013, this thing cost $224.28. So now we are using the exact same formula, but we're, we're missing different pieces and we're given different pieces and now we can solve using some algebra. So here's what I would do. I would divide both sides by 100. So that gets rid of this and leaves me with 1 plus P. Dividing by 100 is really easy, 2.2428, right? We just move the decimal place two spots, so another benefit 100. And then notice, we, in order to solve for P, we have to get P alone. We have to subtract out the 1 because we don't want 1 plus P. We want just P. So we have to do the rules of algebra and just get the variable completely alone. And when we do that, we get 1.2428. And remember, every time we work with P in this formula, it's a percentage. But it's a percentage written as a decimal. So we need to convert back into a percentage. And we do that the opposite way. We just move that decimal point two spots. So what is this? P in this case is really 124.28%. And what did we say our answer was? 124.28%. So like I said, I don't think you need to do that last step. I think that if you arithmetize with a smart number, it kind of solves itself for you. And that's something that you will get better at with practice and, and watching my videos because I will always show you when arithmetize or some other important SAT strategy is a better way to do it than to do it algebraically. And this is a great example of that because I think if most people um, just kind of go their own path here, they are more likely to fall for those kind of trap answers. And it is hard but it's gettable. And especially when we take the real SAT in a couple of years, then yes, this is a question you want to get right because this, this system of solving is very predictable. If you have percentage questions, sometimes just picking that number 100 as your starting value is really important so that you can work with something. And even if you're, it's not about percentages, a lot of times when there's a story question, they deliberately leave out the starting point so that you have to do algebra to figure out what's going on. But if we can avoid that by just making up a starting point, arithmetizing a starting point, we're, we're going to understand the story in a lot of, of a lot better ways, and hopefully that'll help us get the question right. Definitely comment if you have questions, and uh, then for the next module, just make sure you pick the right module, depending on which one you were put in. There are two versions of the second math module, the easy and the hard, and uh, you want to make sure you're going over the right questions.